Hey, this is part two of my short video series showing you through the entire process of making an old school Doom level from scratch. In part one I showed you how I created a plan for the level in text and then did a layout sketch in Photoshop based on that plan. And now I'm going to show you the first half of how I built the entire level in a modern Doom level editor called Doom Builder. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so this is what Doom Builder looks like. When I open it up and start a new map, the first question is how am I going to start building this level? Where should I start? And should I be building it slowly in detail or quickly in broad strokes? Well basically, my approach always depends on the context. And in this case, a key constraint is that I had one month to make this level for one of our level design gems. And this is in my almost non-existent spare time. So I really wanted to work in a way that would guarantee I finished the jam with something that feels finished and that I wouldn't feel ashamed to submit. With this in mind, I decided to adopt what I've referred to in other videos as the skateboard approach, inspired by this image by Henrik Nieberg. The idea is basically to start by making a super simple version of the level, something that I can play from start to finish that represents the bare bones structure of the experience. This would mean that I have something that's technically playable and submittable for the jam straight away, and from there I can just keep iterating on it as much as time allows. So with this super iterative approach in mind, here's the first thing that I made in the editor. The player starts in this small room, they open the door, shoot some enemies, there's a blue door at the end of this corridor which tells them to look for a blue key, and here we can see the blue key through the wall. So we go around this corner to get the blue key, there's a surprise imp around the corner, and now we get the blue key. And here it's a bit of a quiet walk back to the blue door, but it won't be in the final version because things are going to change, which we'll get into later. Anyway, behind the blue door there's the final room of John Romero's head in it, and an exit switch that I've clearly assigned the wrong texture to that finishes the level. So that's our first super basic skateboard version of the level, uh, but maybe now's a good time to talk about something that some of you might be wondering about. Namely, why do I keep talking about John Romero's severed head, and why is that in Doom and in the level? Well, it's kind of an easter egg thing from Doom 2. This is the last level in the game where to finish it, you need to shoot rockets and stuff through that little lava hole in the demon's head. And basically, to detect the damage, there's a little thing behind that head that you can't see. But you can see it using a cheat code, if you type in ID clip, you can go through the walls, and there's a whole fun behind the scenes story about how they made this target uh, look like John Romero's severed head on a stick. <laughs> So destroying that triggers the end of the level, which means you can use it in your own levels in the same way. And I thought it'd be a fun thing to use in my level because it's kind of a tribute to Doom and the 30th anniversary and to John Romero. So there you go. Where were we? We just finished the very first skateboard version of the level. If we compare what we've done in the editor so far to our layout sketch, you can basically see that I've made the left half of the layout and missed out the big gameplay ideas I had on the right side, like the Cyberdemon section, and the tunnely area which opens up when you flick the switch. So let's jump on to making those next. So because this is a level design jam and I don't have much time, it's good to know that we already have something that is technically a level that I could submit. Now it's time to put some meat on those bones, starting with the cyberdemon idea. This is me referring to my layout sketch and building out a very simple first version of the area the cyberdemon is in. This whole idea of having the most powerful enemy in the game early on in the level is pretty unusual and I know that I'll need to really test and experiment with it before I know that it works. So as always, I'm starting by working in a really simple, broad strokes way to just get something in there that represents the idea so we can test it and see where to go next. Once we've got the Cyberdemon in, I move on to making the little tunnel area with the switch at the end. The idea here is that the player makes their way through, you know, fighting their way through this narrow, windy tunnel, and then they flick a switch and the walls lower and the space changes into something else. So I make the tunnel and the switch at the end, and also a few areas that will lower down to change the area when the switch is hit. Let's jump in and see how this plays. The level starts the same, but you'll notice here that I've made this area dark so that it contrasts with what comes before it and what comes after it. Oh, you can already hear the cyberdemon walking around, and uh, there it is. Oh! <laughs> So apparently I've set the height of that wall too low, the Cyberdemon can walk on it and over it, and uh, it's just destroyed us. So that obviously needs changing, and already just from that little test, I've got a bunch of things I want to tweak. Hopefully next time the Cyberdemon will actually be trapped in that little area like it should be. 
And now I'm just creating a little spot to add some ammo and power-ups and stuff before you meet the Cyberdim in. Simple things that you realize are missing when you test your level. Okay, so we're back in the level, we're going to just speed through this to get back to the Cyber Demon section. And hopefully this time the Cyber Demon is trapped in the area they're in, and they're just shooting at us. So we've just got to dodge the rockets. Um, here's the mega health I added, so there's a little more chance the player can take some shots from the Cyber Demon and not just die instantly. And here we are. Okay, so the Cyber Demon is actually where they should be. Um, how does this feel? Uh, it's a bit unpredictable, which I'm not super keen on, but we'll see. Now we're into the tunnel section where we meet our first chain gunner. And, uh, oh, oh, it's really hard because I've run out of ammo. Um, so I need to add some ammo so that the player doesn't need to punch this guy to death like I'm doing now. Okay, so now we've got the chain gun, we can get to the end of this area, press the switch. And this lowers down this section with some pinky demons on it. It was a bit of a surprise which we'll obviously flesh out in later versions, but now the idea is there. And now this section's open, which means we can run in and pick up that blue key, trying not to die from the cyber demon, which is doable. I just did it, but it's quite intense. And now this area is different as well. The, sent the section in the middle has been lowered, caca demons there, the super shotguns to pick up in the middle. So we're starting to get the sense that the level changes as you play through it, which is cool. Now we blow up John Romero to finish the level. So we're getting there, right? It's still really messy and basic, but you can feel the structure and the main ideas starting to emerge, and it's all starting to feel like a level, which is nice. Next up, two examples of me deviating from the initial plan. One of them good, and one of them bad. Here, I'm back to working on the cyber demon area. I start by adding these sections to it to match what we had in the layout sketch, but then for some reason I end up adding a door to it. Uh, a locked red door, meaning the player now needs to find a red key before they can access the area with the cyber demon. And to be honest, looking back at it now, I really can't remember why I did this. I don't know what problem came up that I thought another locked door would solve. The key difference here is that now the cyber demon and the blue key are in different areas, and the player can get to the blue key without releasing the cyber demon. Here's a clip of me testing it in game. We head around this corner, reaching the cyber demon area, and we see a super clearly lit red door. And I don't even remember placing a red key. <laughs> I don't know what my intention was with this. So this is kind of my first example of a deviation from the plan, which I think is the bad one. I don't know why I'm doing this, I just had the idea. Maybe I thought I was solving some problem, but looking at it now I can't even remember what that problem might have been. But now we're coming to the other change from the plan, which I think is a good one. Because when I try and pick up this blue key, the cyber demon just turns up and instantly kills me. And that's even despite me having 113 health and 179 armor, which is quite a lot. So this made me rethink the whole Cyber Demon thing, because it's clear now that the rocket launcher it has is such an unpredictable and lethal weapon that it becomes almost a matter of luck whether or not the player manages to survive it or not, which isn't really what I'm after. So now I'm back in the editor and I've changed the Cyber Demon to one of these big spider robot things. I think they're called Arachnotrons. And along with that, I'm deleting the locked red door that I added because it just wasn't helping or solving any problems as far as I could tell. So I'm showing you this because these two ways of deviating from the plan are quite common in the process and it's worth talking about. One of them is that sometimes you can kind of end up deviating from the plan by accident or in unnecessary ways that just make things more complicated without making them better. I kind of did this with the locked red door. And you've got to catch yourself from doing this because going down the wrong path without thinking about it can get you into trouble and cost a lot of time. The other one is about playtesting your level while you make it because you always learn things along the way that you can never see when you're just designing it on paper. In this case, I spent the whole paper design phase in the first video thinking that a cyber demon would play one of the main parts in the level. But after actually trying that idea out, I'm changing it to something else because I realised it just didn't work out in practice. So the point here is to see the process as an exploration of ideas and not just an exercise in blindly sticking to your plan that you went in with. Ultimately, I ended up swapping out the cyber demon for two other enemies, which I'll show you soon. But for now, there's still a key part of the level which is completely missing. The thing is, once we get the blue key and open the blue door with it, the end of the level is just a severed head waiting to be blown up. <laughs> so now it seems like a good time to get a first version of the final encounter in. Remember that I'm still working with very little time on my hands, so when it came to coming up with an idea for the climactic fight, my goals were to keep things simple but hopefully effective and also on theme for the level. 
A key idea I came up with in the tech design phase was the idea that in this level, you press switches and various walls and areas lower and open up to change the space and introduce new enemies in interesting, surprising ways. To me, this kind of thing is really textbook OG Doom, and I wanted to represent this in the level and use it as a kind of recurring theme. So what I'm doing here is adding a proper exit door to this final room so that I can move Romero behind that door and then use the room we have for the final fight. My super simple idea for this is to make a room that looks really intimidating, like a climactic place where something dramatic is about to happen. And then when the player enters, these four little areas will all lower from the ceiling and the player suddenly has to fight these four big enemies out of nowhere. A super simple, hopefully fun surprise and not a nasty one to provide a memorable end to the level. So those are the four enemies that will appear and that's the line that will trigger the nasty surprise. Let's give it a test. I've given myself a shotgun and I've placed a blue key in this corridor so that I can just skip straight to the final area. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> the player walks in, these four monsters come out of nowhere, and those two revenants fire homing missiles. So this is quite intense, which I like, and this kind of works. <laughs> Although it's pretty intense when you only have a shotgun and no armor. But now we have a final encounter. Okay, so we're on to the final iteration that I'm going to show in this video, which I considered the first full draft of the level. This is to say that every section of the level and every key idea is represented and playable. And not just in a placeholder way, but it actually works and is kind of fun and it flows properly and all that stuff. This iteration also includes a basic lighting pass on the whole level, because lighting is both a key part of Doom level design and also quite quick to do. And in general, I always recommend level designers think about lighting and do at least a quick pass because it just makes such a difference. Now, I'll point out here that there are some things I've left until later in the process with this level and later than I normally would if I was making a level for a different, more modern game. For example, I've not really paid much attention to verticality so far or the visual theming of different areas in the level because I know that in Doom, changing this stuff is actually surprisingly quick and it doesn't usually involve a massive rehaul of work and kind of throwing things away. Anyway, what am I up to? Here I'm adding a new area to the final encounter that opens up when it's triggered, giving the player more options to move around in that encounter and also adding to that theme of the level changing as the player plays through it. This is me going back to the chain gun section and making the main area really dark so that the chain gunners are kind of hidden in shadow and then making the last area with the switch bright so that it stands out. And here I've just created a new little side area to put the chain gunner in so that they're really hidden away and they can get the player by surprise, which is kind of the whole point of this dark tunnel-y area. Throwing in some extra enemies there, and now we're ready to test the first proper draft of the full level. So that is still basically the same other than these armor pickups that I've added for flavor. But we see the blue locked door, we pick up the shotgun, there's an imp in the distance and the shotgun at the same time. First little section where you can choose should I go left or right, which angle should I cover. Lots of more little shelves, a weird little opening that you can see which teases a later part of the level. Here's a mega health implying that there's some big enemies coming up. And the sound of those big enemies when they see you is nice and cool and kind of dramatic. They're much less lethal than the cyber demons, but they're still kind of tough for now, so we continue. Into the really dark corridor section now, where the yeah, chain gunning guy is hidden away. And now this area really feels like a different kind of area, you know, that combination of darkness and hidden chain gunning guys, the contrast in the lights on the switch and this area where the pinky demons come from. Way more dramatic, just really simple changes that have improved that. These enemies kind of highlighting how this area is now open. New area behind you's opened up. So now I really feel like I've started to deliver on this idea that the level really changes as you play through it. And you know, we're keeping the player on their toes. The intensity is picking up, the player's got a double barrel shotgun now. And now they've got to push through the area with these hell knights in. They can try to take them out like this, or they can continue on and open that door. Little pinky surprise, I've added a double barrel shotgun in case they didn't get the other one. Oh, and here's an extra little surprise that I added. The player knows they were starting a fight with the Hell Knights, but it turns out there's an extra surprise. The Revenant fires homing missiles, which is kind of different, and they're also the enemies that I'm using at the end, so this is kind of a teaser for what's to come. They're not too hard to kill on their own, but when there's two of them, as we'll see, it gets a bit more intense. Now uh, this area's opened up, 
Cacodemon's in there. There's a nice plasma gun sitting in the middle of the room. And before we head to the blue door, I open this new section up with some ammo to pick up. And here's the final room. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I forgot that I actually changed the two reverence to four. So there's a lot of them now. Which is quite intense, but so long as the player gets out of there, it's quite cool because now they can fight them using the rest of the level as the arena, in a way. But this is still quite intense. To my right now is the new area that I added, so there would be a bit more options to move around in this fight. Some weird glitching in this area, which I'll have to fix. Uh, we've dealt with most of them now, but where's the last one? There we go. One more. Yeah, those homing missiles keep things pretty interesting. But we just got to finish off this last one. Oh, there we go. So that's it. Now we've killed them, and we can go to the final exit room, which at the moment just has the head to blow up. But that feels like a proper level to me now. I'm quite happy with that as a kind of first draft or an alpha version. And I hope you can see that, even though it's obviously not finished, it's got all of the main ideas and the structure and stuff that I intended the level to have. And from here, it's just a matter of more testing, iteration and polish, which is what you'll see in the next video. So stick around for that and I'll show you all the extra detail and changes I make to this layout, how I texture the whole thing and make the different areas stand out from each other, various gameplay tweaks and feedback I got from playtesters, and finally a bit of a post-mortem on what I think went well and what I could have done better. But I hope you found this interesting, this kind of walk through the process, let me know what you think in the comments. See you in the next one and cheers for watching.